Welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. This is Lance coming at you. And this week we're going to talk about making beef jerky. It's something that we really like here on the homestead. And the best thing about making your own beef jerky is you know exactly what quality of meat you're using, what kind of products and ingredients are going into it. You just know everything about it. So something we really like to do and we particularly like teriyaki jerky. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So one of the things that people really don't understand is that it is super easy to make beef jerky. You can make it complicated, you can do it hard, easy. We actually got three different methods of how we can do it. I uh, went to Walmart and I got some things that are cut already. All I have to do is dump this in with some marinade overnight, throw it on the dehydrator, it's done tomorrow. This one's probably the second easiest. It's already cut thin, all I have to do is just kind of slice it, or you don't have to, you can just throw it in big slabs if that's what you want. Or you can actually just get the big full piece of meat and then you can slice it. I would definitely recommend slicing it versus cutting it. And she's gonna go over to our little slicer. And we have a very cheap slicer, but it works. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna show you how this works and how I do it. So come along and let's see how, let's yeah, see how it so. goes. First option, this is all the same kind of meat. It's, it's a bottom round steak. This has been cut up like stir fry. Just to kind of give you an example of how thin this is already is. So this is perfect. I can just soak that and put it right on the dehydrator. Easy peasy. This again is bottom round. It's cut thin, as you can see. It's just in big slices. So either you can cut that yourself or leave it just like that. It's up to you however you want to do that. And again, this is the bottom round roast. One of the things that you want to look for is not to have a lot of fat cap and I'll probably trim all this fat off. It just doesn't dehydrate well. So then we'll just run this to the slicer, get it all nice and thin and go from there. got the slicer ready. One thing that, that I do try to do is I, I want to slice against the grain of the meat. So I don't know if you can see that where you see kind of little, where it looks like there's just little modules of meat versus the length of the, of the muscle fibers. You want to kind of cut across it. That's going to make a very tender cut of meat for you when it comes to the jerky. So all we do at this point is come in here. I already have it set to the thickness. And this is, that's what controls this. Now, sometimes you may have to slice it a couple times and readjust it. Sometimes you just have to play with it. Let's turn it on, let it get up to speed. And the colder the meat, the better. And then you just go ahead and do it nice and slow. And be very careful, with a very sharp way. And if you can see, that's maybe a little too thick, so I'll make to trim that. Turn that down just a little bit. That's pretty good right there. You can almost see through it. So I'm gonna call that good on the thickness and just start slicing. All right, we got all the meat cut. And just to kind of show you, this was the big long Fat slices, of course this was the big hunk of meat. We got all nice and sliced up and this was the pre-sliced. So again, it all kind of looks very similar. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna make teriyaki. So this is just KC Masterpiece Marinade Honey Teriyaki. You can use anything. I've used the Best Choice Teriyaki Marinade or the Lowry's Marinade. It all kind of about tastes the same. You kind of whatever flavor profile you want. So I just give it a good shake, and I like to put down one layer on the bottom, and just pour it in. Alright, 
here uh, on top of the first layer of marinade. And then I'm just gonna go in here, pour that on top. Try to get as much out as you can. Then for the soy sauce, I just like to use this as kind of a thinning agent. Not too much. Just kind of pour probably about a half a cup in there. And then this is the real fun part where you get messy. And then I just try to get all the pieces of meat mixed in, separated. And depending on how long you're gonna keep it, I'm just gonna do this overnight. But if you do it for a day, I wouldn't keep it in there forever in the fridge, but you know, you can come in there and mix it and separate it again, just so it gets more coated and evenly, evenly coated. And then when it's all kind of done, I kind of push it all, make sure it's all in there. And then at this point, put it in the fridge, leave it overnight, and then we're ready to put it on the dehydrator tomorrow. All right, so I got the meat out of the refrigerator. Of course, this is the next morning. So good morning, everybody. As you can see, so I'm trying to not get my hands too sticky here, but it looks like it's all nice and marinated and ready to go. And then what we're gonna put it on is we have a, a Cuisinart dehydrator, a little five tray. I think we got it on Amazon for like 60 bucks, something like that. Um, and typically what I do is just do one tray at a time and then stack them all up and turn it on high. All right, so this is the, the messy part. So typically what I do is I come in and pull out a piece of meat and get it all nice and flat. Then I just lay it in there just like this and just you just repeat the process until it's all full. And sometimes I do try to get if there's excess marinade or whatever you're soaking it in to get some of that out so it's not so drippy and you guys can see how that's just going to fill it up and every dehydrator is a little different this the air kind of blows up through the middle so i try not to fill that over and then we're just going to fill these up and then we'll come back and show you what we do at the very end all right we have all the trays loaded as you can see but at this point, typically what I try to do, I'll put the lid on here. You just, on this one, you just want to make sure everything's nice and tight. And then typically on this one, I put it on high. And then about every two or three hours, I'll come back and rotate the trays because the bottom will cook quicker. So that's where the heat and the fan is. And then we'll just kind of rotate them around. Check them two or three times. And it usually takes about eight hours or so until it's all nice and dry and ready to go. But We'll let it cook and we'll come back and uh, give you guys an update. It's been about eight hours and the jerky is done. So we're just gonna turn it off. And we have came back and swapped out the, the different trays every couple hours to make sure that it's cooking evenly. As you can see, it's all done. So typically what I do at this point is I will take it off and lay it out to cool down. And then once that's all done, then I'll wrap it up and usually put it in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag of some sort, and store it somewhere um, cool and dry. But the main thing is you do want to keep it airtight. Well, folks, that is how we make our beef jerky. We probably have enough now that lasts us a couple weeks. Uh, we also like to give it away to friends and family. Uh, something that we really like to do and we enjoy uh, and, and like I've said before, it's a good way to control the, the, the quality and the taste and the, and the flavor profile that you really want for your beef jerky. Uh, but the cost is pretty comparable as well. So when you go to a big box store and get a big bag of it, it's about a dollar twenty per ounce. Same thing what this is with the average of the meat we bought and the sauces. So it's all about the same. Now if you go to like a convenience store, this costs more. So way cheaper than that or if you go to a gourmet beef jerky place online or, or to a store, uh, theirs are gonna be a lot more expensive. So 
Again, uh, thanks for coming along. This is how we did it. We'd love to hear how you do it. So if you have any good recipes, leave it in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. We'll even try them out. So send me over some recipes. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button, ring the bell, so you get notified on any new videos coming out. Again, thanks for coming back to the Rock and Sea Home set. We'll catch you next time.